I'm your DM, Jared, and welcome back to D&D 404, <laughs> brought to you by these other three misfits. That's our intro right Give there. Give it back, Jared. Give it back. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome back to D&D 404. I am your DM, Tony, and joined with me today are the other three board games under my coffee table. Fellas, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself, starting with, oh, shit, I lost all the pieces. What do you mean you don't have the rule book, Jared? Funny that you're talking about rule books, because I got one right here. Frost Haven, loving it. It's amazing. By the way, this is Armos checking in. Got a little excited about the rule book, but yes, uh, Frost Haven. I just got it in the mail. It kickstarted this thing years ago. I'm talking five plus years ago. Finally, just showed up. I got bags of metallic coins. I got all the the special things that you can't open. Contains Gloomhaven spoilers. Don't open it. That's my game. <laughs> hey, Jared. Yeah. Pay the man. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I guess I'll go next. Uh, my name is Dan. I play Minus Pebble Walker, your tiny little swarm keeper ranger. And I'm definitely the mousetrap of this family game night. Mousetrap is a dope board game. If you don't know what it is, look it up. It's hysterical. It's amazing. See, it's amazing. Five out of five. Would recommend. Setting it up is the worst, but it's fun after <laughs> that. <laughs> All right, Alec, you're next. Take it away. Uh, yeah, my name is Alec. I play Drell of the Ashborn, and my favorite board game would have to be <laughs> Secret Hitler. I don't know if you've ever Hell played yeah. that game. It's uh, yeah. oh good, tons of fun, tons of fun. Uh, for those who don't know, you are either a uh liberal or a fascist, and like the board. The, the, <laughs> <laughs> realistically everyone at the table has to try to f find out who hitler is secretly and try to kill him it's a great time basically among us in a board game yes pretty much yeah it's among us in a board game that's exactly what it is but it came out way before it's yeah oh yeah, yeah yeah it's so good and the it's it's silly like it not serious is yeah, the best part you get to it. like vote for like the president and stuff and accuse each other of a bunch of stuff it's a good time yeah it's a good one. Never played Tony? it. Tony? Oh, my board game? Uh, I'm going to go with the super nerdy Catan. Ugh. It's been a while. I love Catan. It's so much fun. It's so I mean, it's fun. good, yeah. I don't know what that is. The the super marketing game of controlling land and longest roads, and then you have to fight each other for wheat and sheep. It's great. So it's like Risk. Uh, it's no. All, it's everything about Risk without the fun fighting. Yeah, without the, the <laughs> best part. <laughs> without the best part. And you know the deal. Before we roll for the recap, we got to do the rundown. And today's rundown is brought to you by Jared. I was not prepared for this. <laughs> <laughs> it is in the Discord. <laughs> Come, I, I'm not saying that you're wrong. I just said I wasn't prepared. But you know what? I'm glad you uh, glad you mentioned it. Uh, 404pod.com. Guess what, guys? We need eyeballs on that. We're going to revamp it a little bit. So you're going to see some changes. So go on over to 404pod.com. Check out our list of all of our past episodes, our merch, our podcasts, and all of our socials are all out in there. 404pod.com. Now it's time to roll for the recap, which is a new segment that we do. Rather than me just giving the recap, we're going to go ahead and roll a huge D4, uh, and whoever it lands on is going to give the recap for last session. One being me, two for being Alec, three for being Dan, and four for being Jared. I was it the last two times, so there's no fucking way it's going to be me again. Right? Oh, I was going to say, wish. I was so ready for last week's. I really give it a no flick, idea. Tony. I give it I a no really idea this week. A flick. Yeah. It yes. is three. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> That's not okay. I, I, I love I love this. Too. I love this so much. I, I, Tony and I are before the podcast. We're like, I'm talking about do perfect. I'm like, I'm be the Corey Cotton of this podcast who always gets picked. I hate this. <laughs> Welcome to the wheel of unfortunate. Dude, remember that time, Dan, where I told you every time we should change numbers and you uh, said you didn't want I'm to? Remembering now, it's all coming back to me. Last time on D&D 404, the Bloodshard Bandits made it out of the Hangman Woods and reconnected with their new friend, Sully and Berthy, a fallen giant companion and a Kanku merchant from the town of Husk. All five agreed to travel together on the way to Raven 
Haven's Rest and began their journey. After strange material plane visions, one long rest, and several feelings later, the group was met by a bizarre cat in a tent. This fortune teller gave them each information in return for items near and dear to their heart. Drell and Menace received golden tokens, while Armos took hold of a silver coin. Madame Fuzel disappeared, and after fighting a sorrow sworn further down the path, Raven's Rest soon came into view. We pick up this session on top of the hill overlooking Raven's Rest. Bard, play us into the episode. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, and welcome to the world of Humbrea, featuring three first-time adventurers and one very patient DM. This is D&D 404. Do you guys remember what happened at the... Yeah, I remember I was the only one to ask a question that benefited the actual <laughs> team, and everyone else just asked super selfish questions. So, yes, I, I do actually remember that. Oh. So, yes, that happened. Um, <laughs> Menace and Drell got a gold coin, and uh, almost got a silver coin. And then you guys also fought a Sorrow Sworn. As you guys were beating it up, Sully chucked it over the mountain right before getting to Raven's Rest. Like Uncle Rico. <laughs> yep. That was before after that was before or after the fortune teller. After. Okay, that's why I'm missing hit points. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I remember now. We pick up today's session with the three of you journeying with Berthy and Sully to Raven's Rest. As you march up on that final hill, you hear a sigh of relief coming from Berthy. <sighs> we're finally here. You clear the hill. You see a small city town waving the banner of the red sun overlooking dark mountains, the sigil of the red dawn. The city is secured by a tall, dark stone walls with patrolling guards. The dirt path before you leads to its shadowy walls to a dark iron gate that looks to be guarded by well-armed soldiers. Beyond the walls, from what you can see, are a mix of fortified buildings and torn, half-destroyed homes. You see rising smoke from its tattered chimneys, and in the center of the town, towering over everything, is a large castle-like structure, surrounded by its own walls. The castle, at a glance, looks built for more military, like a barracks. And Berthy and Sully are like, oh, we made it. You guys ready to go? And it looks like it's not too far. You'll definitely be there within the next few minutes. You see from where you're standing that there are guards checking in uh, people entering the city. It looks like there are a few caravans that would be in front of you. Kind of like the same situation from Dilmore. We get to check into the city, except all of these guards are wearing red dawn tabards. I think Minus is just enjoying his walk. He's not really thinking about much. <laughs> All right, I'm excited to see a new city, guys. This will be good. New places, new friends, right? Uh, I don't know about that, Menace. Do you not just see that giant banner hanging from uh, the castle? A banner. And then um, I guess I guess I'll just ask uh, Berthy. Hey, uh, so yeah. when did the Red Dawn move in? I, I take it they haven't been here forever, right? Oh, yeah, those who own Raven's Rest. Yeah. No, they've been here for quite some time. Oh, really? And they just go back and forth between here and the material plane? Or, like, how does that work? They do go back and forth in the material realm. Yeah. Um, they offer that service at a very hefty price. Um, a price that I, fortunately, have to pay every so often. But, you know, it's the price of love. They're very strict here. And it's very easy to get lost within these walls if you don't keep your head down and mind your business. A matter of fact, the three of you look very out of place. Um... Ah, uh, wait, hold on. Wait a second. And you see that, like, as Berthy is talking to you, he's starting to, like, pull your robes that you recently bought from the other town. He's, like, pulling the hood over you. He's, like, trying to hide your facial features. And he goes, okay, wait, now we gotta take this. And he takes, like, a large black blanket, and he puts it over you, Drill, to kind of hide your massive weapons that's on your back. And he goes, okay, uh, uh, he's, like, patting you down. He's getting a little too friendly. He's, like, frisking you a little bit. Hey, okay, okay. hey. Uh, don't on. touch. Come on. What are you doing? He puts his feather to your lips. That's my no-no square. He's an artist, Drell. Let him work. All right, perfect. He flails his feathers, and he goes, okay, great. Wait, hold on. And he puts out your feather. He tries to hide your feather, Menace. 
And he puts the hood up and he tries to get it like nice and tight to hide the glow. Yeah, I mean, I just put my feather in my pack for now. He's like, all right, great, great. Here's the gig. You see how I got Sully here for my fallen fella? If fallen aren't claimed by somebody in the walls, they take them. They just take the fallen and they make them do slave labor. Real rough stuff. Okay, you see everything that's built over there? Fallen, okay? This town is pretty much indentured to the Red Dawn. However, Shadowfell is what Shadowfell does, okay? So they just kind of like, they provide some services and everyone just kind of deals with it because nobody can really say anything. They got, just take a look. And he like gestures to the giant iron fortress in front of you. So the story is the three of you are my bodyguards. I've hired you because last time I came here was a bit too dangerous and I was almost killed. So I hired a couple extra uh, muscle to come with me. So that's the story. Don't talk to them. Okay, if they look at you, I will talk for you. Okay, but what if they say hi to me? What if they're like, hey, how's it going? They're not going to be that friendly. Oh, okay. Okay, they're mean. And what if we aren't on the best of terms with them? Like what? Oh, you know, our our faces might be places that they've seen maybe be identifiable. I don't know. Just an idea. What if that was the case? What if, what if that's the case? What, what would plan B be? Um, I don't know you. That's plan B. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that hurts. That cuts real deep, man. <laughs> what else cuts deep? Ah. Swords. That cuts ah. deep. Ah. Yeah, yeah, it does. It does. Yeah. Now, when we're in there, you can kind of go do whatever you want. Just keep your head low. Okay. I got to go to the mailing service. That's a bit of a wait. If you want to send <gasps> anything to the material realm, yes. you can do that here. It's going to cost you a lot. Whatever you got for trade, they're going to want something big. Or if you got Raven coins... It's like three coins a letter, which is absurd. I tug on Armos' cloak. Armos, Armos, can I have can I have three Raven coins? I look at him with like puppy puppy eyes. Absolutely not. Please, I need to send a letter to my mom. If you're good and you don't talk to the guards, then maybe you can get three Raven coins. Ugh. That's going to be hard. <laughs> I'll try my best. All right. If it means a letter, then I'll, I'll I'll do my best, Armos. All right. I see I see nothing that can absolutely go wrong. Everything's going to be great. You never get mixed in with the wrong crowd, right? Mm. Good, great. Mm. Plan. All right. He claps his feathers together, and the Sully and Berthy begin to walk down the road. All right. All right. Uh, Sid, just give him a little juice, okay, before we leave. I just want to make sure everybody's in good sorts. And, uh... I just cast eight on everybody. Everybody gets 10 temporary hit points. Ooh. Ooh. See us. I'm going to go ahead and give an amazing speech. <laughs> you want to give a 10 minute speech as you walk? You can absolutely give a 10 minute speech. <laughs> nice. It's not very many hit points. <laughs> it is 14. Hey, it's 24 more hit points we didn't have. Hey, Armos is about to do one of them long talks again. Listen up, listen up. What do you got there, bud? <laughs> I am not giving a long whatever talk for 14 hit points. <laughs> you got time. Armos does his best uh, to to really hype up the guys to shut up <laughs> this entire time. What does that sound like? What's that hype sound like? Why don't you give me a few bars? Armos, come on, man. We're waiting. I mean, they literally come from under rocks. Mm -hmm. Anything you say is gonna work. Yeah, Sid, Sid's not gonna know what the hell you're saying. Yeah, one of them is a rock. You know what? <laughs> yeah. How about this, Reginald? Why don't you take it? Take this one, buddy. Nah, nah, you can go. All right, listen. All right, <laughs> Reginald's boys. Okay, listen up. All right. As the leader of Reginald's bandits, the, the three of you inspire me. Not you though. And he points to Sid, and he goes. The three of you lift me up every day. You make me feel larger than life because in reality I am very large, but here I am very small. But with the power of friendship, I feel huge again. Look, I got my ace queen. And he begins to flex. And I feel really good. And the more you feed um almost tome with the souls of the innocent, that really makes me feel good, you know? Uh and the more souls you guys collect, uh, I get a kickback of that. I get an end of the year bonus, which is which is great from the big man upstairs. And I just want to say you guys have been doing a really great job. Okay, I want you to keep it up. I want you to keep getting those blood shards. I want to keep absorbing those blood shards. Let Armos have anything he wants when it comes to blood shards. Keep doing that. That's great. I nudge Drell as he's talking. He, he's losing me at the blood shards. I'm, no, no, no. I'm, I'm shaking my head here. violently. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> as you can yeah, see, yeah. the value of blood shards. Just, he has a chart now. The value of blood shards <laughs> just keep going up, you know? 
Oh my god, he turned into a crypto bro. <laughs> this is this is at Fuck. the end of the ten minutes, and now I'm just like, Drill, I'm not I'm not having this. He's gonna start pitching us blood shard NFTs minutes we gotta go. Oh man. And I turn around and walk away. <laughs> the short of the long is if you pay me blood shards every month, you can join the Hustlers Blood Shard Club where you could just make more blood shards. Your money buys you more money. You know what I'm saying? We've all walked away at this point. <laughs> With my master classes, you two can earn more blood shards. <laughs> We're like three meters down the path. <laughs> Reginald, hurry up! <laughs> you five approach the Raven's Rest Gate. Similar to Dilmore, there is a line to get into the city, and it looks like there's only a few travelers ahead of you. And they seem to be bartering with the guards. Stuff that looks like common household items in the material realm, but look really worn down and tattered here. And you see that after you see the exchange between travelers and the guards that the guards are giving them a very hard time and all their voices sound very deep they sound they sound like orcs and then as you're overhearing these muddled conversations they're trying to keep their barterings to themselves so nobody else can overhear a few moments pass and you approach the guards as it is your turn in line and Berthy starts to barter with the guard and you overhear him saying that the three of you are hired guards and you plan on using the mailing service in town that was his business he stated for uh, this visit. And then you see he goes into his hand cart and he takes out a giant stack of supplies. There's a, various potions in there, vials, the potion that, the potions that he offered you guys, and there's some food in there. And you see the guard go to birthday, he goes, uh-uh, five, two more. And the birthday goes, well, come on, man. I need to pay the, I need to pay the mailing service. You can't just take all my good, uh-uh, two more crates, five, five entrances. All right, what about this? And he takes out one more crate, he puts it on top, and then he has something folded over. It looks like a towel that has something rather large in there. He looks around and he shows the guard what's underneath the towel, he, away from you guys. And the guard goes, oh, okay, five entrances. Knocks on the gate, a smaller door opens for the five of you to fit through, and you walk in. You three walk through its iron gates, and the town looks busy. All around you are people moving with purpose. There are red dawn guards on every corner. You hear the sounds of hammers of busy blacksmiths. You hear town folks talking amongst themselves. You even hear the occasional no slacking in the distance followed by whips. Red dawn members are yelling at fallen. The fallen here are all human and they all have shackles around their ankles and waist and large ones around their neck. They look pale as can be, barely wearing any type of clothing, and they look very old and very tired. No one seems to be standing still. The city itself looks leaps and bounds better than Husk. Buildings, although damaged, look well built and fortified. But you get the instant feeling that its inhabitants of the city is in service to the Red Dawn. The banner hanging from the fortified barracks in the middle of town appears to be acting as a beacon of intimidation. All these buildings are on top of each other. They have very gothic style architecture. For every two buildings that look well built, there's one that's completely destroyed within them, but they all look like they have somebody living within them. The streets are very wet and damp, broken. Broken roots are jutting out of the ground. It looks like a lot of landscaping needs to be done, but the focus is on the walls and the barracks. Those two things look pristine compared to everything else in the city. All of the people that aren't Red Dawn members are Kenkus in dark robes. It looks like that's the normal inhabitants of this town. All the Red Dawn members look to be wearing the same uniform. They are all wearing half plate armor over a red cloak that hides their facial features. With armor and hoods up, there isn't much difference between any of them except for their size. Some of them look like to be the size of orcs and others look like to be the size of humans. They all look like they're ready for war. All right, well, the first thing that happens is you see Minus is just red in the face. <laughs> he hits the floor and, like, nearly passes out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, he reaches his hand up. Like, <laughs> I, was, I didn't talk. I had to hold my breath. Give it. Uh, He's doing the same things up against the wall. <laughs> 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 that was 
hardest thing I ever had to do. Uh, uh, you promised, Armos. All right. <laughs> so, Armos, if you look at the last three months of these of the power of blood shards, you can see it's just going up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I give I give Minus three uh, the coins. Awesome. Hey, which way, Berthy? Which way's the mailbox? Berthy goes. All right. So yeah. So you want you want to mail some now too? Great. Wonderful. Follow me. So what we're gonna be doing is you see that large intimidating barracks all the way at the end, right in the middle of the city. Yeah. 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 I'm yeah. gonna be online there for a while. There's always a long line, and it always takes forever. Uh huh. I don't have anything I want to do here. As a matter of fact, once I mail this stuff out, I'm gone. So if you would like, I can hold your place in line. If you want to go, I don't know, explore or something, but like. So do you want, can I like give you a letter and could you mail it if I give you the coins? Would that be cool? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, if you want to do that, that's fine. Awesome. Maybe we can end our journey here together. Oh no, ending journey. Sully seems a bit sad. Wait, Sully, how do I, oh. maybe this Maybe this is a question for you, Berthy. How do I, say I want to mail something to you from the. Uh, another area. How would I <clears throat> do that? I give him a nudge. Mail me. And he looks at Berthy. Berthy looks at him and like, Sully never got mailed before. Uh. Well, you're my friend. I want to send you letters. Uh. I don't know. Berthy goes, Well, eh, I'm sure they have this type of service on the other side, right? So. I don't know, do you have a large military faction city that's hosted by the Red Dawn and scares the shit out of people to do what they want on your side? Do we have that, guys? <laughs> I haven't been yeah, very far. <laughs> pretty much every city, yeah. Yeah, yeah. One of them turned into zombies. They're doing fine now, though. <laughs> Zombie. <laughs> <laughs> but how do I... Where do I tell them to send it if I want to get it to you? I, I mean, just tell them the name and then Raven's Rest and then you can come... I guess he can come here, Sully. Come pick it up here. Oh, letter. Look forward. Okay, bye. And then Sully turns around because <laughs> now he's expecting a letter. From him. Yeah. Uh, so this this one to my mom is the most important. I'll, I'll wait till for the other letters until I get back out. Uh, yeah. So I I uh I have or I've already written a letter. I've been doing that on like long rest and stuff like that. Okay. And I open up the envelope that we got from the cabin and I put the letter in that envelope. I. I have already like drawn over the seal, you know? You're using the envelope that said Julius Kendrick on it? Yes, I'm using the Julius Kendrick envelope, but now there's like ink over it and there's a drawing like over it so you can't see it anymore. Roll me a sleight of hand check as you try to cover that. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> That's a 20. <laughs> okay. Not Nat. You successfully covered the JK on the envelope. Thank goodness I have halfling feet. My God. I can't tell you. People are going to be like, well, how come he never rolls ones? <laughs> I roll them all the time. It's just. So, yeah. So, I give him. I, I seal it up. Um, I probably have a stamp or something. And I, I hand it to Earthy. And we. Minus is now good to go. Berthy, uh, as the three of you are walking and you're talking about, like, giving them a letter, it looks like you're about to say goodbye, and you hear some bells ringing, like a handbell trying to get some people's attention. Somewhere towards the center of town, there is a wooden platform in the center made to be viewed upon, uh, and there are people standing all around as they catch the attention of a handbell, and on the platform is a noose, mm. multiple nooses, and there are three people about to be executed. Two of them are fallen, and one of them is a Kenku. You hear this man in red robe ringing the handbell and yells and speaks out to the crowd. Hereby, hereby, as the bell tolls, for those who are traitorous to the Raven's Rest will meet their end. Bing, 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 a red dawn guard member pulls a lever as these three bodies fall and are executed hung. The two fall in, wisp away as their necks crack into this blue ethereal light. They're completely evaporated and you hear faint yells or moans escape from their bodies as they are completely gone. The Kenku is struggling and can't breathe. <laughs> and a few moments pass and the Kenku dies, and it's just hanging there. 
and you see people looking up, nobody says a word. You see some Kankus put their hoods up and continue about their business. Berthy goes, ah, it's one of the things I hate seeing in this town. What, what happened? Minus turns around, oh, oh, oh my God. <laughs> well, uh, probably did something they didn't like and they hung them. And that's what happens to people here that speak out or do things they shouldn't do. Or sometimes they just want to send a message. Minus is just trying not to cry. Uh, do they do this a lot? Yes. For, yeah. for like, just, I take it any reason because these guys suck, right? Or did they have to do like something specific to be executed? For what they claim, they're traitors. They try to leave. They seem to have fallen up there. Maybe he tried to get them to escape. Leave the town? Yes. But, I mean... People who are live in this town cannot leave. And they serve them. Oh. People who come and buy passage come and go pretty quickly. Otherwise, you get lost within the walls. And then you're here. Hmm. And they don't let you leave. Well, wait. Why can't he leave, but you can? So he gets, so he takes out like a piece of paper that he got from the guard. He goes, this is a pass that I paid. It shows the goods. And it has like a list of items, like a long list of items, because there's a whole bunch of uh, things he gave them in that crate. And he goes, this allows me to be in this town for X amount of time. And when they feel that I have overstayed or anybody's overstayed, they keep you here until you earn your keep. And usually once you get that, you don't leave. Mm. He rolls up his paper and tucks it back in. So like I said, head down don't talk to anybody well at least don't talk to the guards and you should be fine guys i want to leave <laughs> yeah <laughs> i don't like it here i'm getting the vibe we can't talk to anybody so exploring around is maybe not gonna help does it does it look like there's goods that we can buy somewhere there are stores yes so oh, okay. you, you have Got like a good part way into the city. It looks like one giant market district, and everything they're selling looks like secondhand items, rotten foods, um, old beat up weapons. You know, anything you would find in a normal town, you would probably find here. Mm -hmm. And then Berthy asks, like, "Well, wait a minute. What are you guys? Why are you guys here?" There's a figure here we're trying to find. It's the name, and I look around to make sure the coast is clear. So Julius Kendrick is what we're looking for. He, uh, he was the reason we were in the woods. We had a map that led us there. But then once we showed up, we definitely found that he was there, but... And he ran like a little bitch. Yeah, we think he ran here. Okay, who's Julius Kendrick? If you don't know him, you probably can't help. Uh, yeah, if you <laughs> have to ask, you haven't met him. <laughs> He's got tattoos. They're scary. Mm -hmm. What's wrong with tattoos? And I look at Menace. <laughs> <laughs> so you're looking for like information. That's why you're here. It's going yeah. to come to one of the most dangerous cities in chat. Okay. That's all you want. Let me get this stuff out. Let me get my business done. Okay. Give me some time. Once I mail it out, come find me. I know a guy here. Mm. He's more in the trade of like, you know, selling stuff onto the table type deal. Um, Very discreet stuff. But you guys help me out by getting me here safely. So I'll introduce you to him. But once I introduce you, I'm out. Whatever happens past that point, you're, you three are on your own. Sound good? All right. Are there any, like, cool spots we should check out while you're doing your thing, Berthy? There is a tavern. Uh-huh. Hey, Sully, what was the, uh, what was the name of that tavern again? Oh, uh, oh, yeah, it's, uh, Raven's Tears. Like plural? Uh, or like possessive? <laughs> <laughs> so it has an apostrophe. The squiggly line comes after the S, not before. Wait, what? Raven's Tears. <laughs> it's an inn? Yeah, it's like an inn. It's like, you know, um... All right, where, where should we meet back up again? Uh, here, take one of these torches. And I give him, <laughs> I give him my talkie torch. That's wonderful. So you give him the torch. You give him one of the talkie torches. And he takes it and Berthy goes, eh. I mean, that's great. What am I supposed to do with this game? You'll know. Uh, <laughs> and I have to come find you. So why don't you tell me? what I need to do. Just turn this on and then it's like a communication. Yeah. You'll be able to talk to us. When you're done with your business, to just turn our on torch. the torch. Yeah. When you're done, light this torch and we will find you very quickly. Yeah, it's like a beacon. Beacon. <laughs> it's really hard to miss. I love beacon. I remember the taste of beacon. <laughs> <laughs> just be in a non-crowded place. This is just before you light it. He looks around the crowded place that you're in. Ah... Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. And he shrugs his shoulders and he pockets the torch and um, 
he goes to wait online he takes your letter and you see that when he takes your letter he takes out some stuff he's mailing and it looks like a care package like the size of a care package and then there's a letter on top and it's for benji <gasps> i can't even say anything because my character doesn't know who benji is <laughs> Huh, that's Benji. for you. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's nice. And the letter is made out to somebody named Benji. And he goes and stands online with Sully. And Sully and is just singing to himself. <laughs> All right, let's go uh, look around this place, guys. Uh, do, I, do I notice anything like where there anything else of note here? Where there are like crowds maybe or... Any important uh, structures that stand out? You, well, what are you looking for anything specifically? Just whatever has the most buzz around it, you know? You see that everybody around you is moving with purpose. Um, nobody is standing still, just casually talking. As a matter of fact, currently the three of you look like the odds one out, just looking around. You see people trading. There are like food stalls everywhere. You do see... Um, smoke coming up from a blacksmith on the corner. Uh, it does have a sign on it. It says the Shadowless Anvil. There are um, other stores that sell are selling like general goods. And you do see a sign for the inn, which is the Raven's Tears. Which looks like it's pointing down like a darker alley. And all the buildings around the dark alley are more destroyed and they don't look as fortified as the ones you saw when you came in. All right. I feel like if we go to any of these shops, they're just going to be worthless junk like we've seen. What do you What do you guys want to do? You want to go to the tavern? You want to wait it out at that little shop over there? What do you want to do, guys? I could definitely go to the tavern and see if they have some sort of meat. I don't even care if it sucks. Wait, what's wrong with all these veggies? Any more of these, <laughs> I can't do any more of these veggies. <laughs> I mean, they're not so bad, Drell. And he's eating a bunch of... He has like a large head of lettuce. Then take mine. And I put a whole head of cabbage in his mouth so he can't talk. <laughs> oh, oh, super greens. <laughs> <laughs> Is, have these gone bad yet? Has it been like They have a, not. Really? Wow. They have not gone bad yet. Mm. I ate some of my veggies as we're walking, <sighs> munching on a carrot. Menace, make me a constitution saving throw as you were eating your food. Oh, God. That's a uh, 15. You take a bite of your veggies and, and it tastes so sour. It's like a mix of sour dirt and rancid shit it is very hard to swallow and as you're eating it you you're like fighting it to get it down i, I don't even think i get it down at that point i take one bite i taste it and i go oh guys this is a <laughs> oh that's uh, i think these i think these are expired i think the magic wore off you drop the carrot, and in your hand is that gold coin with the cat winking at you. What the heck? The coin you got from Madame Fazel, that woman you talked to before you came into the city. And then you see a little piece of it go ethereal. It looks like it's counting down. Like a little piece of it, like a piece of a pie, is withered away. What the heck? I lift it up to my eye. Guys, you see this? Armos, taste this. And I shove a veggie in his face. Absolutely not. I wouldn't need it before. I'm really not gonna eat it now. Fine. Oh. He's... Drell, try this apple. Uh, I'm okay. But guys, I, I need I to. Told, <laughs> I told you, I don't like veggies to begin with, Minus. It no, all this tastes is for science. Fuck. I know it all tastes rotten to me. Believe me, I'm sure honest. it tastes like some kind of chemistry, but nope. When we get to the tavern, <laughs> guys, this tastes terrible, but it looks good, right? This looks good, right? Mm. No, it didn't no. look good before. No, yeah, it doesn't look good. <laughs> Am I going crazy? <laughs> Sid, this is good, right? <laughs> and he shrugs. Yeah, he's mumbling as they walk to the tavern. What's going on here, Odin? What the heck? The three of you turn down an alley as you are following the signs for the Raven's Tear Inn. As Menace is spitting out the food and trying to get all the taste out of his mouth from this seemingly rotten carrot. You walk it down these streets and the streets are very narrow and the buildings are torn and worn down. You see people inside of them. You see Kenkus like, living in them. Um, you hear them. A lot of the homes are see-through because of how torn down they are. And at the end of a dirt road street, there is a broken down tavern, has a giant gaping hole in the roof, and is a broken off sign that says the Raven's Tears. And you see through the various holes along the outside wall, there are people sitting down and it looks like they have mugs of ale. Three of you walk in. 
as Drell comes in right behind you two, one of the, the doors are like hanging off the hinges and just falls. And everyone looks at you for a brief moment. And then they go back to their drink. Is there any Red Dawn people drinking or is it just the King Kinku? Where are they? Kenkus. 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 Go ahead and make me a perception check. Nat 20. <laughs> uh, five. All right, Drell. <laughs> I'm really paying attention. I'm looking for food. You look in and everybody sitting at the table looks like some type of hired merc. You instantly notice, like with your battle sense, they are all packing heat underneath their robes. They have sword, like different various types of weapons, swords, axes. Some of them have quivers on. There's about seven other people like paired off, maybe one guy in the corner. Um, with all their hoods up and then you see two red dawn members on either side of the bar and they look like they're doing their job but very lazy at it one of them has their hood off and it looks like they may be on break it is a drow elf he has a cup and behind the bar is a fa is is a fallen with a giant shackle around his neck lazily cleaning a glass of of drunken ale the barrels behind him that have all the drinks are all broken. All the taps are leaking, and the ale does not smell good. What are the three of you doing? I guess I want to try to find, like, a inconspicuous place to sit. Like, I want to be able to sit close enough that I can hear people, but obviously, like, like people's conversations, but not close enough where they're like, why the fuck is this guy up in our grill? The place isn't that big. The room is about, like, 50 feet wide with like various support beams in the middle you're going to be close to anybody if wherever you sit it looks like all the corners are already taken i guess we'll just find somewhere like um drill you pick a spot i'm gonna go find a high chair oh fuck i'm so bad at this uh <laughs> why don't we sit over here i guess a table that has the backs of like most red dawn people in there like or like there is there are red dawn people in here right there are two guards on either side of the bar. I'll sit at the table closest to the drow elf that's at the bar drinking. Are the regular tables like sit down height or are they like? They're sit down height. They look like broken round tables. The seats are all like broken boxes and like uh, buckets that can no longer be useful. Yeah, since since that's like sit down height, I go over to the bar uh, and I go to an empty seat next to the drow elf. I'm like, hey, is this taken? The drow elf looks at you and goes, excuse me? And he goes to reach for his blade. No, no, just this chair. Oh, hey, huh. I, I, I'm just grabbing a chair here. He kicks it towards you. Huh. Thank you. Minus, by the way. He spits on the floor. You catch me on break one more time, and I'll have your head. Okay. Have a good one. <laughs> I take the bar stool over to our table and you drag <laughs> it over. <laughs> like really loud. Yeah, I'm like fully just pushing it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, what are we ordering? Why do you guys look annoyed? <laughs> <laughs> Never change, Minus. Never change. <laughs> Something happened while I was gone. <laughs> That's my favorite. <laughs> favorite. <laughs> oh, my God. Are there like... Uh, people walking around taking orders uh, do we go no. up to the bar <laughs> it looks like you would have to go talk to the fallen guy behind the bar and everyone looks like they're just drinking something out of a worn cup that they all seem to be leaking just to make sure there's conversations being had you see some of them are having conversations among themselves mm -hmm. in low whispers I think Drell was trying to overhear conversations. Yeah, I was trying were... to just sit next to like somebody that's having a conversation, just see if we happen to get lucky and hear any like, you know, drama or whatever, or like some, rumors some going around. Some key words, maybe. Yeah, even. exactly. Give me another perception check as you're trying to eavesdrop. I I shit you not. That's another fucking nat twenty. <laughs> Drell is on alert. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm literally trying to see if I can see or hear anything about real food. With another nat 20, as Minister drags the chair over, you see people stop having their conversations or looking up from the drink to put their attention to the loud screech across the broken wooden floor. You've heard what the Red, gar the red Dawn Guard said to Minus. You look at the Drow Elf. You see him put his drink down as his back, as Minus turns his back to him. And he looks over at the other end of the bar, the one who is alert, the other guard who is alert, and he gives him a nod. 
shakes his head towards Menace to keep an eye on him. I got a seven on my perception check, so he's like, oh, is there a menu around here? He's looking around. <laughs> In addition, uh, one table over to you as conversations begin to pick up after the after Menace's ruckus, you, you hear some key words. They're talking really low, and it you're not talking in a language you can directly understand. They're talking in Orcish. Do you speak Orc, Drell? Um, I do not. <gasps> nope. I speak Orc. But you got a seven. <laughs> <laughs> but you overhear some key words in common. Uh, one of the words is sorrow sworn. And then you hear more, more Orcish mumbling. And then you hear Raven's rest. The two look like they are... They don't look like they're, they're plotting. They seem concerned. Bro, what are you looking at? I thought we were ordering food. Minus, just order whatever you want. Okay, Armos, you got the money, so I'm going to give you my order. You go up to the bar, okay? Yeah, Armos, whoa, actually, whoa, 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 since whoa. you're going to be placing the order, uh, I'll just take anything that has to do or it sounds or it looks like me. They take gold here. Armos, come up to the bar with me. <laughs> All yeah, right. Armos, just go with them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I drag him to the bar top. Armos, are you going to the bar? I guess. I'm like a toddler, like dragging their parent. <laughs> Armos is incredibly embarrassed. The two of you mosey up up to the bar, and there's a fall in there, and he looks up to you lazily. How may I serve you? Oh my god. I look at the menu. What What is on the menu? Uh, hit me with some, some options. We have drink. Mm-hmm. We have jerky. Awesome. Okay. We have ale. Mm -hmm. We have jerky. You have uh, you have like oats, almost something without meat. And you hear, you, you see Drell like just nod his head when he hears the word jerky, and he thought, "We'll take some jerky." Provide trade. I mean, give up Reginald if you have to, Armos. I'm fucking starving. Hey, why do we give up your big ass, huh? <laughs> As Reginald yells across the bar, and nobody seems to notice. Have you ever had your very own? Self-portrait. I'll draw you. Provide useful trade. This is useful. And I go... And I do a quick sketch of him. You see that he, like, turns his whole body to look at one of the red guard. <laughs> one, of the, uh, one of the red dawn guards. Hey, 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 here we go. And I take out uh, five gold. How about this? You, you, you flash the five gold and you put it on the counter. And he goes, trade accepted. And he turns around and he gets three cups of ale, puts it on the counter, dirty cups, takes three dirty dishes, goes underneath the bar. You hear some animal scurrying away. Sounds of like weird, demented, tormented rats. And then three dirty plates are placed out in front of you. And it has like this rack of jerky. It looks very foul, but steaming like it was hot and warmed up. So then I take it, I pick it up, and uh, head back to uh, where Drell is. Before I head back, I ask you, hey, do you have any uh, anything without meat that I can eat? You got bread, you got, I don't know, oats, uh, ale. Cool. Okay, I'm going to go back to my table. Okay. All right. I I put the, the food down, the jerky, and the ale. And I'm like, there you go. And I, and I wait for them to try it first. <laughs> uh, I'll, yeah, Trell, I think, immediately is super hungry, and he grabs instantly grabs some jerky and takes a bite of it. You go to eat the jerky. Go ahead and give me a constitution saving throw as you are downing this mis mystery meat. Uh, 17. You get it down, and to you, it tastes <laughs> acceptable. Hey, this isn't too bad. This is pretty good. Menace, Menace, here, try some. No, oh no, I, I don't Come need on, meat. Minus, Thank you, though. Minus. It's not, it's not, it's jerky. <laughs> Drell, do you know what jerky is? Uh, yeah, that's what I just said. It's literally jerky. Come on, just try Which some. Which is what? What is jerky made out of? Food. I don't know. You, you, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what you're trying to get at, Minus. Oh my god, this is dried meat, Drell. Oh my god, it is? And then I take a bite. <laughs> Roll me a constitution saving throw. Uh, three. <laughs> That was with a plus one. <laughs> you instantly throw it up. Awesome. All over the table. Uh, I don't see any sort of reaction to a coin, right? When I, I assume it's a timer that you're not aware loud. Like I assume I'm assuming it's like a, it's a menace thing that's specific to my coin. 
Well, we both got gold coins though. Oh. And that's why Armos and the thing is Armos got a silver coin. Right. So I assume his isn't like, I guess like just theory crafting well, like out of character. Like, let's see what happens when I, I drink my ale. Uh, so I, I uh, well, first I'm like, oh, God, Sid, Sid Jr.'s clean it up, please. Well, well, come on, be a good sport. You see that, like, Sid goes behind your pant leg and then comes back out with, like, a little mop and bucket. You have no idea where it came from. And he's, like, begrudgingly trying to clean up Armos's vomit. I'll get the next one, okay? I promise. Drell fakes like he's drinking the ale from the establishment and kind of throws it over his shoulder and then fills it up with his alchemy jug of uh, actual ale and starts drinking from it. Before Minus notices that, Minus doesn't notice that and goes cheers and then drinks his. Armos 100% notices that. It just <laughs> follows drills. <laughs> Give me some of that. What's the uh, bad ale taste like? Give me a constitution saver throw as you take a swig of this ale. It's a fifth, uh, 12. You take a swig of the ale and it just tastes rotten rancid like it's been sitting out too long has not been refrigerated at all could have been made months ago could have been made years ago you simply cannot tell off the taste oh this is nasty you guys look like you're enjoying it fine you don't think this is gross no this is wonderful uh, i think it's pretty good and i just keep drinking it uh, that's all i get all right Whoa. nothing happened to my coin okay okay did you look at your coin hmm I, did you check it it just popped well, up. It appeared as yeah. in his hand, yeah. Oh. He took a bite of this food, and then once it tasted horrible to him, in the place of where the food was, was this coin. Mysterious. Oh. Yeah. Oh, well, that was kind of gross. I'm going to go up and get another one. Uh, oh, wait a second. Oh, Drell, I just came up with the best idea. What if you use your alchemy jug? Oh, my gosh, Menace. Wow. Uh, that's such a good idea. Um... Joe kind of looks around and it's like, but I would really, really hate to, uh, you know, just waste the one spell ability per day that, you know, for this thing. So, what have you ever I mean, not used it on ale? Come on. Uh, Armos, as you are listening to Drell and Minus go back and forth about the alchemy jug, you hear a thud and a tug at your backside that. underneath your cloak. And behind you is a small Kenku child holding a, the bag of money mm. that you had as he tries to just pickpocket you and he looks up with his large with, with his beak he looks very he's wearing very tattered clothes and he dashes out of the tavern absolutely fucking not boom goes through the broken doors no out into the streets almost our money <laughs> oh i am on it <laughs> I am bad out of hell chasing after this thing. I'll fucking kill him. What's happening? The three of you get <laughs> you get up and you chase him out. The two of you will follow him, correct? Uh, yeah. Oh, of course. Yeah, Armos is running, so I'm like, oh, oh, we're going. Yo, okay. I'm misty <laughs> stepping the fuck in front of it as soon as oh. I see it and just grabbing him by the throat. <laughs> you run out of the doors and you miss each step to try to get in front of him. Go ahead and make me a grapple check as he's trying to go in between your legs. Ooh, I've never done one of those. How do I... You're going to make a contested strength check here. Oh, man. Against his dexterity. So I just do my strength? Yes. But what if it's like a negative? Then it's worse. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. I got a four. <laughs> you, you, are you Misty stepping in front of him? I wanted to. So you, okay. So you run out of the doors and you see this small Kenku child with your with your sack of money, and he tries. He goes to run down the street. You miss the step in front of him. You're gonna roll with advantage as you get the jump on him. Yeah, a five. <laughs> <laughs> he rolled a 19 as he sees you appear. Go, ah! His whole beak like uh. like a 90 degree angle. Go, ah! And he slides in between your legs and keeps running, heading towards the main road. Mm. The three of you keep suit as you are catching up to him. He makes it to the main road as you hear some bells in the street. Bong, bong. These are very heavy bells as the gates open. When you walk through the gate, you walk through like a small door. The full doors open to Raven's Rest. Hold on, Armos, I'll get him. <laughs> As you're chasing this Kanku child through the alleys, he crosses over the main road. The three of you catch a glimpse of what's coming down the main road. As you're, as you're crossing it, 
it is a that giant blood ore vein from the demon that was killed in the forest alongside with guards and the giant iron suit of armor pulling the card with the giant blood ore vein mm -hmm. as you see it coming into town the three of you see this happening and then you dash over the main road and go down more alleys where you see this small Kenku child in a corner with your gold. And he's like, uh, 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 I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And he like throws it down in front of you. And he's like cowering. I'm not even thinking before he says anything. I'm like, got you. And I throw my net at him. <laughs> and you see the small child stuck underneath the net and he's like flapping. He's like freaking out. He's trying to fly out of the net. Like, ah, ah, ah. He's like biting on it, but he can't get cut through the rope with his dull beak. Armos, check the bag. Make sure everything's there. I count all the money. Menace, r run his pockets. Okay, so yeah, so I grab, I grab the whole net, and like lift him up. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. Okay, you lift him up with the net, and he's like flailing, and he looks scared. Hey, 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 buddy, calm down. We're not gonna hurt you, okay? Whoa, whoa, whoa! Don't rule that out. <laughs> oh, okay, he might hurt you. He's like looking at you, but he's only looking at you from like one side of his face because he's a he's upside young down. Bird. <laughs> yeah, he's so he has like a side eye you to see. To look at you, right? Is it all there, Armos? Yeah, I, I, I counted the money. What, what did it I is, find it out? It is all there. Yes. What are you doing, buddy? And I poke him. Ah, please don't eat me. Please don't eat me. What? We're not going to eat you. Let me go. And he starts screaming. Uh, uh, calm down. Uh, hey, if I let you down, you'll be chill, right? Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> I'm putting him down real easy. I'm like, all right. Stand up. And I stole the net on him. See, we're not hurting you, right? Everything's okay. He's shivering. Buddy, what what are you doing, man? Why why are you taking our gold? Why are you taking our stuff? I, I need it. Hey, what's your name? What is his name? <laughs> Shady. All right, Shady. I'm going to take the net off, okay? Uh-huh. It's going to be all right. We're not going to hurt you. Don't make any sudden movements, though. I can't promise anything with my uh, friend back there. Uh uh -huh. I look over at Armos with fire in his eyes. Uh, isn't moving, st just glaring right. at him. <laughs> All right, take the net off real slow. <laughs> Put it back in my pack. All right, Shady, where, where are your parents? He he shakily, sca very scared motion points towards the barracks. Well, they live in the uh, in the that building over there. Yeah. What what do they do? What's 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 your deal? What what are you doing? Come on, dude. They were taken. They were taken. And they're in. They threw them. They threw them in there. And they haven't been home in a very long time. And oh. And I was just trying to get some money to, to maybe pay them out. Well, they got like bail money. Uh, you got to pay something. I don't know. How's this town work? I I haven't tried. It just is the only thing I got. What are we doing with this kid, guys? I mean. He's about to be a crater here in about a second. <laughs> oh my god. Armos <laughs> pissed. <laughs> All right, let's let's just can we can we just take this kid back to his parents? I don't want him out in the streets. Hey, did you not just hear what he said, Menace? He, he we can't take his his parents are captured. Oh. He literally said they're taken. That's why he's out here on his own. Huh. So you can't take him back to his parents. Well, I feel bad just leaving the kid here. It's a tough world, Menace. And Trail turns around and walks on the skin. Well, I mean, what do you want to do? We, he can't come with us. Why not? You want to... Uh, I'm trying to unpack that. Story. I'm it's, trying to yeah, unpack this. Uh, uh, um, I don't know. I've never found a lost kid before. I feel kind of bad. I feel like we should take him with us. Menace, this is like kind of the thing where... It's like you follow all those Instagram accounts about uh, like whaling and animal abuse, and then you realize <laughs> you have to unfollow them because they're just really sad and you can't really do anything to fix it. This is like one of those situations. What's an Instagram account? <laughs> we'll come back to this. We'll come back to that. We'll come back to that. Uh, um, I guess like so. Are we able to? So so I assume from what he's telling us, his his parents are now like labor like workers, right? Like they're just. Essentially, yeah. Probably. I ask him if he knows how to get into the barracks. The only way I see is through the through the front gate. That's the one I ever see people come from. 
Come on, guys. Let's take the kid back. He's he's hopeless. He's innocent. He's harmless. He is hopeless. <laughs> what is he gonna do? <laughs> oh, I just I feel bad leaving him here. Come on. He can give us information as we go as we walk, right? What else are we gonna do? That that tavern didn't have anything good in it. What do you mean the jerky was amazing? Except for the jerky, and Minus rolls his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Your, your torch turns on. Oh. Hey, uh, how do I work this thing? Oh, oh, what the? Is that a mouth? Oh, why is it biting me? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can't have it too close to your mouth. Just what, keep it, what, keep it about an arm's length apart. apart. What in the shadow? How does this thing work? I think you have to talk into the mouth. I'm not gonna kiss this thing. What are you talking about, Sully? And your two torches come out. Yeah, I pull my torch out. I'm still holding on to the kid with hey, my left hand. And turn me on. Who turned me on? Minutes, your torches, rambling, scared. Um, Chill, and I smack him against the wall of the alley. <laughs> hey, hey, uh, you done with your business? Uh, yeah, yeah. Luckily, I, you know, I uh, turned the corner, but I mailed those, I mailed those letters out for you. Oh, I appreciate that. That means a lot. All right, so you're done. Uh, we got uh, some more company. By the way, uh, wait. What does that mean? Are you pinched? Drell leans over and he yells to Minus's torch. No, Minus wants to adopt a little kid. What? Well, he looks so cute and he's helpless. I I want to get him back to his parents. <laughs> what is he? A kanku. Oh. Yeah. You got any? You got any jobs? You got any jobs for him? Oh yeah. Uh. Okay. Where Where are you guys? Let me, maybe I'll come find you guys. Uh, In an alley. Great. So where's it? That, that's at the corner of what and who? Uh, I look around for street signs. It's at the corner of, uh, get a map and fuck off. Uh, no, I'm, just, I'm just kidding. You're trying to help uh, us, Drell. <laughs> uh, sorry, sorry. I just couldn't pass that up. You look down the alley to try to get, uh, get like an accurate description. And you notice some red dawn guards, like looking down the alley. And you quickly move your head back and they walk past. And you know that you're just off the main road. And you go back to the torch. And you tell him where you are, and Bertha goes, Okay, uh, I'll, I'll be there, and I'll be there soon. Uh, just sit tight. Oh, okay. How do I shut this thing off? And the torch is like, It won't stop, like, talking to me. You just flip the switch. Yeah, yeah, just, just tell, just, just say torch. In the middle of a sentence, the torches go out. Oh, okay. Uh, he, he got it. He got it. <laughs> Wait, you're not gonna take me to the barracks, are you? Nope, we're gonna eat you. Oh, no, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> Is you're not very good at this. Just uh, talk I'll to him to, calmly. I'm trying to tell him a joke. I don't know. You're good at these joke things, Drell. I'm not. I'm, I'm just trying to. Uh, this is embarrassing. <laughs> a few moments pass, and you hear some footsteps coming towards you, and some giant footsteps approaching you, and barely fitting, squeezing in between the alley, is Berthy and Sully. And he goes, and Berthy looks at the situation, and goes, "Oh, what do you got going on here?" Yeah, this is a new recruit. Say hi, and I push the kid forward. <laughs> Help! <laughs> Minus, Minus, you're not very good at this, please. All right. Look, this kid, his parents apparently got taken to the barracks. Is that true, little guy? And the kid nods. And would it be possible to, I don't know, get into your contacts with your guards that, you know, you got your pass from and possibly bribe them to get his parents out? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Or is that I don't just know like... any guys. I just gave that guy a good deal. Um, the contact that I know, I feel like he might have some inf information you guys may need. He's more of a dealer. Kind of like, you know, sell stuff on the table. But um, he might have what you're looking for there. But as far as he goes, uh, you probably shouldn't take a kid with you wherever you got cooking. That's right. You know what? You're right. You should... Look no, after him. Whoa. And it's all goes, child. Yeah, I mean, this would be a great opportunity for you. Your protege. Ah. Uh, yeah, think about it. Who's going to take all this on once, you know, you kick the bucket? That's a good point. We got to go save his parents. You got to go look. You got to look after him. I feel like that's a pretty fair trade. I mean, it seems pretty rock solid. Holds a lot of water uh, there. I mean, yeah, I guess this place isn't the best for him. Um, I mean, he might be better off in Husk. Uh, but I don't know if you can make that journey. That's a pretty ruthless journey. Well, why don't we see what we can do for his parents before we talk about <laughs> making him leave here? Because, uh, again, this is kind of like his home. So, all right, all right. 
Here's what I'll do. Just watch him for a little bit. I'll take it to you, got it. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll yeah. try to take care of him. Um, no, no promises, though, you know? But let's go to my guy. I got to get out of here. So let me bring you to him, and then we are split ways. And he hands you your torch back. Sounds good to us. And he goes, come on, follow me. Sully, can you keep your head down? You're denting the buildings. Sorry. And he's like holding the little Kenku child like a baby. <laughs> the Kenku kid is like, I'm scared. I'm scared. I'm scared. <laughs> and the three of you start to follow Berthy. You cross the main road again. You are now on the other side of town as you are navigating through these broken buildings. You are walking to the edge of the town along approaching like the far side of the wall of the city and you could get like at a good angle the barracks that is looming over it seems kind of close to the barracks it seems like this shop is like trying to hide in plain sight the building he's taking you and the general the sign on the general goods store is called the shades demands and you walk in and there's a lot of rotten fruit there a lot of rotten leather really old stuff worn rope and other various mundane trinkets and there is a kenku sitting at the at the at the um counter and he sees and he sees the he sees all of you walk in and goes oh we got some shoppers how, how can i how can i help you Bertha goes over and he starts whispering and then he points at the three of you i wave <laughs> and then the owner goes oh have them come around back Earthy comes back to you and he goes, okay, this is where we pot ways. You're going to go around back. You're going to knock on the back door four times. Ba, ba, ba. Wait. Ba. All right. Ba, ba, ba. Wait. Ba. Mm -hmm. He's going to open the door. You can do your business there. He gives like a clapping motion with his feathers. He goes, I wish you three the best. We never met. And he looks around and he goes, all right, Sully. Ready to take care of his kid? Where's the kid? And Sully has, has his hands empty. He goes, uh, kid gone. I knew I should have made him into a crater. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> it's it's okay. Honestly, it's probably the best. If we if we can do something about his parents, his parents will know where to find him. All right. We didn't need we didn't need to have the kid with us. I think that's probably the best. Anyways. I think he think he lied to us. Knew it. Three of you go around back. Yeah. Bop 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 bop. You see a little slide door that shows a Kenku eye pressed up against it. And he looks, he eyes you up and down, closes it, psh, opens the door, and he tries to rush you in. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Scoots you in. Closes the door. The room is pitch black. <sighs> Got a little lantern, nice green flame, drags you in. The room is deceptively a little bit larger than what it looks like on the outside, but it's not like a magical room like you got... Um, a, a sense of a magical room that's like larger on the inside. It's just like you can tell the majority of the building is dedicated to this reason, not the general store up front. And he hangs his lantern up in the center of the room and it's like lowly dim. And he goes, the name's Denko. How can I help you boys? You see, you, you get a better look at this Kenku and his like feathers are slick back. He's not wearing like a hood or anything, but he's he has like a really deep v robe and like his feathers are like ruffled out what is he what is he got a gold chain on and uh <laughs> looks like a real sleaze ball he goes what can i do you for you want some real weapons huh yeah i got the real weapons for you zenko zenko help you out zenko got the real weapons and he shines over and there's some weapons on the wall um just looking at them they look like obvious fakes mm. <laughs> goes, how can zenko help you what are you looking for I'm looking for some really special uh, lantern oil. And I and I lower my glasses and I wink at him. Goes around his counter. He looks at you. He looks down at your waist. Who's holding the fell Ogren? We have two. I have one, actually. Okay, then I have. And we got off one of the guys. I must have the other one. Defeated. So he looks at Minis and Armos. He looks down at your waistline. He sees this lantern hidden but hung from your belt line. Interesting. I have what you need. And he goes over behind the counter and he's moving some boxes out of the way. And there is a false, there's like a secret cabinet in the wall, a false wall. And he opens it up and he takes out a little box and there are three vials of oil. Mm. 
and it goes this come with condition and price mm. first for the three vials i'm going to need 100 raving coins yes and you're looking at the oil you're looking at the vials of oil and they are bright luminescent green neon green they are shining out of the vial can i make a oh we're bartering this dude i want to make sure. an insight check to see if so uh, like you said everything else on his walls seem fake i want to make sure that he's also not trying to just scam us go ahead and make me an insight check yeah we're eyeing this guy <laughs> That's a nat one. <laughs> I also got a nat one, but I get to re-roll that. <laughs> uh, it was an insight, right? I also got a nat one, which I is actually a two. <laughs> There's no way all of us just fucking rolled nat ones. I got a 19. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the two of you are like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, oil. Yes, of course. This seems legit. Yeah, it is green. Green, good. The vials are glowing, this luminescent green. Sid is like looking at you and he's like reassuring you that these may be the real deal. He feels something within them. The vials are like bubbling within there and he have that consistency. With a 19, you even remember this type of liquid when it was, when you got the lantern back in Dilmore, it was broken and it had like this loose oil like stained on it. It's the same consistency. You are certain that this is the real thing. Now for Zenko, you know that he gave you a really high price. For oh, of course. Knowing how much like a Raven coin is worth, but you don't think he's trying to sell you a phony item. The two conditions. One, 100 Raven coins for the three. That's a good deal. That's a good deal. The second is that you have to use them here. Cannot have you leaving shop. Does that mean we're leaving right now? Have you, have you seen this been used? You've seen people use this oil before, right? I have people who try to leave here, go through the material plane. Same method Red Dawn used for their mailing service. And he does quotes with his feathers. Is it one person per lantern or can we all use the same lantern? Only one lantern needed for the three of you. And you recall when you guys came here that Julius Kendrick lit his lantern and the environment changed. Okay. Uh, so we accept your deal that we leave, but how about we lower this Raven coin price? And when we come back, we don't tell everyone that the weapons on your walls are all fakes. <laughs> he squints at you. Make me a that's great intimidation check. It's better than what I was gonna do. That's awesome. Okay, okay, nice. I, I I'm not bad at it. <laughs> so let's see. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa! I'm really good at this. <laughs> Let me help. Uh, <laughs> That's the one thing I'm very, very good at. I don't know if I want to re-roll this. I rolled the 13. Uh, uh, I'm gonna re-roll it. I'm gonna use I'm gonna use one of my luck die and just 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 to be safe. I really hope it's not lower this time. Oh my god, it's lower. <laughs> <laughs> well, you still got a 13. <laughs> Wait, don't you have an inspiration die? I know, but I so I get my luck die back out of rest. I don't want to use my inspiration. Yeah. Die yet. Okay, I'll use my last luck roll. Oh my fucking god. Wow. <laughs> okay. I have the coldest die right now. I rolled a 13, a 10, and now a 9. And I now I have to use my inspiration <laughs> die. <laughs> Okay, fuck, oh. come on. I just wanted you to know, I have a plus eight to intimidation. Dude, I have a plus four. <laughs> so I've literally been just rolling complete ass. Oh my <laughs> fucking god. Carter, there's <laughs> impossible. No way. That is insane. I rolled a seven. Let's just go over this. It was a 13, and then he re-rolled to a 10. Then he re-rolled, and it's a nine. And now with plus four, he rolled a three, which is now seven. Oh my fucking god! <laughs> I I I I just grin at him after I say it, <laughs> dude. He's he checks your bluff and he looks at you. And he goes, "Well, you gotta tell. You could be a material plane. Uh. You know what if uh you know you could not take it and then you know you go out to the street and maybe I tell Red Dawn." That you're here trying to buy shady stuff from general goods store. I like to think that with every luck roll was after Drill said that, him getting closer and closer going, huh? 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> 
or him just being like, come on. <laughs> well, how many Raven Queens do we actually have? That's the question. We have enough. Oh, yeah, do we? we? Do. You're yeah. Well, you should have told but, me that before I burned all my fucking oh. slots. No, I'm just kidding. Hey, I was, I was ready <laughs> to help you. I was ready to throw in everything I could. Um, I thought you had it. I know. That was the, one of the best fails on the podcast. I'm just saying. <laughs> that was. That was wonderful. <laughs> it couldn't have been any worse. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what are the three of you doing? <laughs> all right. So I see Drill Armos. trying to hagger. <laughs> is it hagger? Hey, the man. Haggle. 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 There it is. I, I see Drill just trying to haggle as best he can and just failing and then failing. And after the third time, I'm already reaching for the bag. And then after the fourth time, I've already uh, got a hundred pieces in my hand and given it to him. Very good, very good. And he pockets the hundred coins and he puts them in a bag. <laughs> he puts it in his pocket. He goes, okay, this make loud noise. Let me see something real quick. And he looks out the door. He opens his eye, eye patch, um, goes to the his door. He, he opens the the little door in um in the door to like look out like the eye socket to see like if anybody's in the streets and he goes okay okay be safe be safe go in closet I'll be out here making sure everything is cool and he points to another door in the back of the room he goes you're gonna appear probably somewhere like outside of a house be quick make sure you're not seen it's gonna be nighttime when you get there just so you know this is, this is also sudden I was in use this place now we're just gonna leave like that i wasn't i was not ready for this all right it was easy so we go into the closet how do we start this thing off we could just do it here right <laughs> Minus, you're talking like we're about to do drugs i, I we just do it here <laughs> <laughs> i've never done this before this is new to me who is using the lantern <laughs> uh it's probably well either minister armos because i don't have one so all right, so this is just like the scroll, I right? I throw it oh on the God. ground. <laughs> There's no way. We are just putting our lives in the hand of Menace. Absolutely Ogburn, not. bang. <laughs> okay, how do I light this? You pick up the fell Ogburn, and you begin to fill the lantern with oil. But then you see it has notches on there. And you hear click, click, and then flame erupts. Drell and Menace. Can you guys just roll me a d20 and tell me who gets higher? Okay, is this the Patreon thing? <laughs> no. Maybe. Maybe. I got five. Uh, it's just a just a normal it's a flat d20. Roll. Just a d20, yeah. High roll. Uh, eight. Great rolls. <laughs> Dude, I'm rolling so bad right now. It's insane. You pick up the oil and you fill the lantern. You light the lantern, and the fell og burn sparks a green flame and ignites within its glass panels. You turn the knob to increase its flame, and the surroundings begin to shift. The other end of the closet begins to transform as the old wood and thatched stone become revitalized as it's rapidly becoming younger and soon turns to porcelain. The realm shifts towards you as you feel like you're about to plane shift. As a large crash is heard from the other end of the room, boom! A large iron fist bursts through the walls and grabs Drell. His massive hand wraps around his torso and pulls him through the broken wall. Drell! Almost in minutes, as the realm shifts behind you, you go to reach for Drell. And as, as quick as he was snatched, the realm shift finishes and the broken wall closes up before your very eyes. The two of you bump into this white porcelain wall. Poof. As your hands begin to bang against the wall of your missing partner, the two of you feel water beating down on you like a shower. Oh, Drell, Drell, where are you? Really wish I used my luck point at that. <laughs> <laughs> The two of you are pressed up against the wall as you feel like you're in another closet type space because that everything's white and porcelain. The ground around you is wet. You feel the sensation of water and steam hits you and the air is fresher and you hear underneath you. Uh, uh, like somebody's below you. Sh shorter than you, Menace. Uh, oh, God. Uh, uh, you look down. <laughs> oh, no. Yep. Oh, <laughs> you look down no, and no. you see a naked gnome covering himself oh, up, oh. holding the loofah with a soapy <laughs> bald head. It's Cammy <laughs> Joe. <laughs> <and he's laughs> <screaming. laughs> 
this is where we'll end. I can't swear at all. I can't swear at all. <laughs> no, not Kemi. <laughs> You're thinking of Jack Wolsinki. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it is I thought it was the little Kemi we just got that, that followed us too. in, right? Oh yeah. my god. It is Kemi Joe, the little gnome that you met oh my god. back in Arc One. <laughs> Which you found the alchemist. Holy shit! So Drell's just gone. He didn't make it with us. Is that Drell it? Drell is gone as he was snatched Fuck up off. by a iron, okay. massive iron gauntlet. Good thing we got three. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Uh, so the higher roll got picked. Uh huh. It was like an initiative roll. I see. Uh huh. Because you two tied in the uh, in the Patreon uh, poll. Uh, yes, I made you guys roll for it. <laughs> gotcha. Well, that's the last time I vote for myself. <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> Incredible. Uh, I also voted for Drell. Oh, <laughs> uh, man. Oh, man. Woo. That's wonderful. So the two of you are back in the material <sighs> plane. Uh, great. In a shower, it seems, uh, next to a naked Wait. Kemi Joe. <laughs> so then that means that we got to be We're at the... City the college, right? Yeah, that's what I would assume. Oh, a lot to unpack. Okay, a we're going to talk about this unpack. in our after show, which is over on the yeah, Patreon. After show. Mm. Patreon.com slash DND404. Exclusive content over there. Um, God, this is going to get nuts next session. Yeah, I'm going to go into a perfect detail about how I'm about to just go into an escape. It's going to be like a... Uh, it's going to be epic. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get the whole prison yard to riot, and then you guys are going to come back, and I'm already going to be free and owning Raven. Uh, <laughs> Raven. Raven. He's the king up on the... <laughs> what took you guys so long? <laughs> it's been years. <laughs> oh, man. Whew. I got to tell you, I was, I was drinking an energy drink uh, this, this episode. I'm, I, I'm trying this new stuff called Rain. I haven't tried it before. It's called Rain. Total Ooh, body. Is it, is it called yeah. One Rain? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I got. I was drinking the Orange Dream Sickle one. Yeah, that that one's really good. And then the uh, Sherbert one is really good. Sherbert. Okay. Yeah. Noted. I don't know how people drink energy drinks for taste, man. It's just. Yeah. I, dude, I I I did this on a whim. This I gotta say, really. I'm not solid. even joking. Yeah, it, I, Tony, trust me, you gotta try Rain. Rain it's is like not bad. Not sponsored, yeah. by the way. Just yeah, <laughs> just something I was shaking throughout so the episode. Bad for you, I can't, dude. I used to drink Monster Energy drinks like nobody's business, and then I felt like my heart burning one day. I'm like, I'm good. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm good. Like I had to. Uh, I had a driver. Yeah. By the way, we don't condone drinking energy drinks. If you know if. They are super bad for I, you. I never recommend well, it. I, uh, coffee and five hour energy. That's that's where I draw the line. I see. I don't even drink five hour energy. I gotta say, oh, I um, found something out that I gotta put out there. So oh. did you know uh Red Bull, the energy drinks? Yeah. And Diet Pepsi have the same amount of caffeine in it. It's like fifteen milligrams off, which isn't like much in comparison, but well, found that out. Yeah. Um if you have any suggestions on drinks we should try, put them in the Discord. Uh, what should we try next? Regardless of if it's an energy drink or whatever, what are some things we should try? I mean, with some non-caffeine ones, because I don't yeah. drink caffeine. Yeah. So let me know. It runs on AA batteries. <laughs> yeah. And with that being said, you three are in a precarious situation as one of you is missing and still in Shadowfell, so it seems. Just couldn't let us out of Shadowfell. <sighs> you just couldn't do it. Oh. You're right there. You thought I was going to make it that easy? I knew I knew it was too easy to be true, but still. Uh, thanks for listening, everybody. Hey, at least we leveled up, though. Yeah, we did level up. No, hey. we that. So, <laughs> it's it's canon. <laughs> now we're gonna move on to the Patreon supporters. Bye bye. Oh, I'm the only one to say goodbye. Oh, bye. <laughs> I got a burrito in, in front of me. Bye. I'm in another realm. I can't be talking to you guys. Oh, uh, true, 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 true. <laughs> Look at this burrito. All right, it's time for the Patreon shout out, starting with the Blood Shard Bandits. Somewhere in the cold winter mountains of North Trillis, Ulrich Shield Dust continues to search for his golden blacksmith hammer. Deep within the mines, Ulrich tries his luck with the help of the finest dwarven blacksmiths. 
After a night of merrymaking with old friends, he awakens, hung over in an ice cave, upside down and hanging by his feet. The sound of a yeti is heard from within the cavern. Julius Kendrick is covered in shrouds of darkness, protected by the fell. He is on the move, plotting revenge against the Bloodshard bandits. No one knows if he is still in Raven's Rest or not, but he is certainly plotting in one of his many hideouts. Without his old crew lost to the blades of the Bloodshard bandits, he has no option but to raise an army of bones. Brains is making waves in the weather world as Meteor Mageologist. Ever since he saved all those people from certain death, his ratings have never been better. The downside is that his insurance has been raised due to negligence. May the rains bless down on Rain's coin purse. Now it's time for the Sigic College alumni, starting with Artemis, who is alert and stoic as he protects the alchemists of the Sigic College and his new good friend, Kemi Joe. Although the culprits of closet vandalizers are still at large. Robot Crisp, the artificer, is determined to make his next invention work. Right now, Robot is developing new tech that will allow for instant hot bread and calling it a crisper. <laughs> Hopefully this invention won't become toasted like the last one. The barbarian Ralamus is making noise as the rock tour is firing up and his band is getting major traction. His band beholder is gaining more fanlings every day. Benjamin Hayes is one of the newest Sigic College alumni and an astute wizard at that. Benjamin is currently majoring in street magic. Come to class to learn or get educated. Sane Chaos is also a new member of the Sigic College alumni, however, a bit of a delinquent just as his name may suggest. Sane Chaos is a part of the Tinkers Guild, which rivals the Alchemist Guild at the Sigic College. And we have Humbrea's heroes. Alex Dredd is back with his newest animated scroll called Night of the Living Dread 3. We've been dreading this one. Man with Glass is currently appealing his recent court ruling as the jury couldn't come to a conclusion. Also, after new evidence brought forth by Man with Stone, the case has resulted in a mistrial. Sergio, the wandering vagabond, has begun travels to new distant lands. His cloak bellows in the wind of adventure. But what is his quest? Lastly, we have another new member, Angel. This ranger specializes in adorable companions from lovable pit bulls to a horde of kittens. <laughs> That's right, kittens. <sighs> Cuteness can certainly kill with their tiny, precious claws and nibbles. And that's it for this week's shoutouts. If you'd like to be added to these shoutouts, why don't you go on over to our Patreon? That's patreon.com slash DND404 to see how that is done. Until next time, everybody.